Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Ifa Shire Evan Jovi of WildWomenDoAsThePlease.com where I'm an oracle reader and guide who assists women in the areas of self-love, freedom, entrepreneurship, and practical solutions to daily living. I assist women in remembering who they were before the world attempted to detain them. This is my review of Healer's Fest. My Healer's Fest experience. My dog. My dog. I'm sorry, y'all. Tasha, you're ruining it. Hey, look, here's the here's the uh, Healers Fest um, creator, uh, organizer, facilitator. Yeah, I got my bikini top on. I'm going to the park later on. Gonna show them how to tan. Show them how to get a tan. So, oh my gosh. So I had such a good time. And let me tell y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna tell y'all the whole story like I always do. Um, so getting down there, right? My money got. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so getting down there, my money got real funny. Um, it just got jacked up. I know. Let me talk lower. You got headphones in. Um, my money got real funny acting. And I really was like, I can't like not go. Like that's not an option. So literally, okay. <laughs> so literally made it down there, you know, with them twins, Grace and Mercy, honey. So got down there, you know, and had an awesome time, of course, with my, um, my hostess, you know, with whom I stay. She lets me stay in her house, in her humble abode. Um, so we went to Hilda's Fest. First of all, the awesome part about it, boom, as she walked in the room, move! Um, so... I walk up, you know, and I'm seeing all these women that I have not gotten to see in real life. Like, I was so excited. So, I mean, so the first thing is, it facilitated sisterhood, like face-to-face -face sisterhood, which is so, really? She's about to knock the camera over on me, okay? Um, but it facilitated sisterhood. Like, I got to meet my M3 sisters in person. Which, you know, I was so turned about. I was, not all of them, not all of them yet. But, you know, I was just excited. Because sisterhood is so, so, so important to me. So, I got to see them without the fuzzy faces on my computer or whatever. Um, and then, it was just the experience. Like, so it's set up at this beautiful park. I think it was called Camp Truitt. I think is what it was called. And, um... It was just this beautiful, like, really woodsy, well-shaded place. The facility was wonderful. I think we were in what they considered to be the dining hall. So it had, like, a fully operational kitchen. Um, we met this awesome guy. First, we met, the, we met the guy and his wife. I know she's in three, but I forgot. I'm bad with names. I'm awesome with faces. So help me. I forget. But it was, there were Fresh Smoothie Cafe amazing people um amazing product awesome um they saved a lot of lives with the water because it was warm so they had this infused water it was awesome carlton and regina okay so yeah carlton and regina are awesome their product is awesome but what's really beautiful is to see them working together that's my husband in the background sorry um to see them work together the customer service was awesome but you know if it's two people working together it's important that they work well together and you could tell that they did work well together um so they had infused water they had lemonade smoothies i think i even saw a couple of sandwiches and things like that that they offered amazing um akul was there holding the kids down she is i think it's seeds publishing is her website seedspublishing.com but you can find her um on instagram too and she was there working with the kids my chicken sister for La Chade, she was doing, um, she did morning yoga, which I did not make. I'm sorry. And my body, I had a really bad drive down. It added a whole extra hour to my drive, so I did not make it out of the bed. Plus, we had um, desserts. We'll just call it desserts that kind of had me down a little bit. Had me down. Couldn't really function like I needed to. Um, let me see. What else? Um... It was just, I did. Can you not? Uh, bye, babe. Love you. Bye. Um, I did. I had a wonderful time. No, move, move with your big self. Um. 
So then, of course, um, Omi Shaw gave me the opportunity to be the keynote speaker. I'm so excited. But I ain't gonna lie. Tasha. Oh my God. Y'all, I'm so sorry. She's seeing them leaving and she's acting like they never leave the house. So, um, I was really excited, but I will be honest, one night I woke up out of a dead sleep, like with my heart beating out of my chest, and I was like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be speaking. Like, I was, I had a lightweight, uh, cardiac issue going on. So, I was really excited, um, and I do want to tell y'all a lesson that I learned from this weekend experience. I'm going to just leave it here because I don't know if she's coming back. What I learned is the way I do things is okay. So I, I do outlines. I used to do really deep, in-depth syllabus and, you know, speeches and, you know, whatever, and have everything, like, written down and everything. I guess that's the Virgo moon part, not sure. But then I realized that it doesn't really work for me because then I get around the people and I can feel the people, and I'm like, oh, this is not what they need. So... I just did kind of what my topic was going to be, and the awesome part was, because I don't know if you're supposed to do this with a speech or whatever, even though I didn't really give a speech, I don't think, but, so I was, I did like a question and answer portion at the end, because I need to interact with people, I don't just want to sit there and babble, and I don't know what you need, you know, if you want to know something else, so that taught me a lot. Like, so what I want to pass on to y'all is do things the way you do them best. Don't concern yourself with how everybody else does them, you know? So it's like, cause it, it, don't you, don't you start. So that's what works best for me. Cause even in my Oracle class, um, I have an outline, but then my students show up and they're like, oh, well, what about this? Well, how do you do that? You know, whatever. So apparently that's kind of how I function because I'm able to feel the people, you know, once I get there and they're able to express what they need because I'm all about women's um, voices being heard and their needs being met. And I, so I do want you to tell me what you need. So, right. Can you, oh my gosh. She trying to tell me that she want to go out outside and bother that daggone cat across the way. That's what she trying to tell me. Lassie, Lassie, hey girl. Um, and then with the workshop, I was really excited. I was more comfortable with the workshop because I've done workshops, but what I had not done before was ask people to interact with each other. Most of the time it's me interacting with them or whatever, but because I understand, like I've been concentrating and understanding, kind of really exploring what sisterhood is and how we can kind of facilitate that more Then I wanted to match people up. It was amazing to be able to watch how people interacted. I didn't really hear what they said because I wanted it to be between them. But to even watch the body language, like at one point, it was like these two sisters that I looked, I was like, what happened? Because it looked like they had fell out or something because one was like leaning like this and the other one was like, her face was all bent up. <laughs> they had both realized it was like, we didn't realize that our shit was this raggedy in this, you know, in this particular area we were discussing at the time. I thought they fell out, but apparently they fell out with themselves. So, there was that. Um, there was drumming. Oh my gosh, there was a live band. I saw the live band on, if y'all look at Leah Bayaka's um, page, she has a lot of video footage. Um, there was a live band that was awesome. It was like the Nor no New Orleans type uh music so you see the people step into it or whatever um that i met awesome people i met the people from harambe house is a harambe house i think is the name of it. i finally met them they have an awesome facebook page um of course i was bossing them around a little bit about their instagram because i was like um you know anyway i was bossing everybody around um so baba shola um oba and baba ajif Aji Shafe, um, all were drumming. They are all awesome drummers. Um, it was just great. It was just great. Um, I just, I just really am so, I'm so grateful to have been a part, but I'm so proud of Omi Charles. Like, I'm like weepy eyed proud. Like, 
I'm not going to do it. But I'm so proud of you, sis. Like, you made it look effortless. Like, it to me, it's like, I don't even want to say, oh, y'all should have been there. Listen, if you weren't there, you missed out. I don't know what the hell to tell you. It was just beautiful. The energy was beautiful. Um, she's a master organizer. Like, she's so good at this. And she makes it look so easy. And it was just, it was like this. Everything just was easy. Yeah, you you are most welcome. I I really appreciate you. Um, because it, it was just beautiful. I I'm so glad that I mean, and it was interesting because Baba Shola had talked about in the class how um Eshu, like when you supposed to do something, like he'll present you with two options. And when um Ooh, didn't see that coming. So when I had such a hard time getting there, it took me like an extra hour. The traffic was awful. Um, my money, y'all don't understand. My money got fucked up. I mean, it was like, my money got horrible. Like, I literally was like, I had gas money. That was all I had was gas money going down. And I remember that he had taught that lesson, you know, saying that when you really supposed to do something, that you'll be presented with these two roads. I have no idea where this is coming from. Um, but you'll be presented with these two roads. And it was like, well, see, my money never, this never happens. It just happens for some reason when I'm going to Atlanta. And that's why I'm always like, uh-uh, no. And so the thing was, I'm presented with these two options. And I can either go, you know, and just kind of go on faith, you know, cause I, it was like, I, what I used to, what I used to do in church was, you know, I would just go like, I would just go on faith. Like it's just going to work out. It's just going to work out. And you know, I just believe and, but I haven't really been in that space like to do that. And so I was just like, okay, two roads, you know, I can stay home and just be like, well, I ain't had a money and miss, I mean, miss my sisters, miss that interaction, miss the opportunity that just literally fell out of the freaking sky. I mean, I could miss all of that. Or you could just be like, but I'm supported in Atlanta. Like you already know you supported in Atlanta. So just go. Somebody's going to make sure that you have what you need, however that has to go. I knew some kind of way it was. So I was like, I took that road. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and one of the things that I've been learning lately is, and I'm pretty sure he said this in class too, was talking about, yeah, he did. Talking about taking that same energy that you, from whatever your root spiritual belief is, you know, was or is or whatever. And learning how to kind of funnel that into this. Because like like I said in church, I just believe. Like I could not have a penny in my pocket. And I would not operate out of lack. I would not operate out, out of non-belief. And so it was like I had to conjure that. Because that's familiar to me. That's, that's my foundations. Like I can conjure that like this. But when I was trying to, you know do everything from this new place. I, I couldn't grab onto it. I couldn't grasp it. So I've been kind of operating from understanding that that energy is still mine. I just know and better understand the source now. But I'm just so grateful. And another thing that happened that I wasn't expecting was during my, um, my workshop, part of it we were talking about where we don't love on ourselves Thank y'all for the hearts. I'm sorry. I'm, I was being rude. Um, we were talking about how we might not necessarily love on ourselves the way we should. <laughs> I so am not, but thank you. Um, how we don't love on ourselves the best that we can spiritually. And I was telling them how I don't feel like I pray like, you know, cause I'm surrounded by amazing spiritual people down there and, they pray prayers that I'm like, this shit gotta happen. Like, who can pray a prayer like that and things not go perfectly? Like, I mean, they pray these amazing, powerful, 
I mean, like, you can feel like yourself get surrounded kind of stuff. So I was like, you know, and I don't feel like I pray like that, whatever. And I was just, you know, because I always try to be really transparent. Um, just because I feel like that's my version of honesty, I guess, whatever. Do you know that the whole class, the whole situation flipped? So I done went from from teacher to student. And I, what I learned about myself is that I'm still not fully comfortable Move with your big self. I'm not fully comfortable with praise, you know, compliments or whatever. Um, I'm comfortable with being a student, but it just was. Here we go again. It was just overwhelming to. It was overwhelming for me to feel that that level of um, of appreciation. Because, I mean, y'all always show up. You know what I'm saying? When I'm doing a Periscope, if I do, I know. If I do a YouTube, if I do anything, I always am supported. Um, so I know I'm supported, and I know I'm loved, and I, I feel appreciated, and y'all make sure that I always feel that. But for some reason, it was just, this time was a little bit different. It was a little lot different, actually. Um... Because a lot of the people who um, were saying it to me were people that not, they did not make me ever feel less than them. But those priestesses I was talking about, and even this one beautiful elder, um, Barbara Shola's mother, oh my God, she is, I love her. Like, I think she is freaking awesome. And she has the prettiest legs ever. Side note, you know, I give compliments like that. But, um, but just to have received that from my sisters, you know, and from these people that I hold in such high regard and that I love deeply. So, um, I know she is. She's amazing. Um, so, yeah, that whole thing happened. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, just bring your ass to Hilda's Fest next year, okay? <laughs> just, <laughs> just make sure you make it. Oh, thank you. Just make sure y'all make it out because, listen, it was, it took me some time to kind of process the entire trip because for me, the entire trip was a lesson. All of it was a lesson. Um, and the funny thing is, I always feel like kind of sad leaving home in Charlotte, but then I feel sad leaving Atlanta. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, Crap, on me, Char, I just realized you said that, that I have two homes, and I just, it just really sunk in, um, because I do, I feel sad when I leave Charlotte, and I feel sad when I leave Atlanta, I feel equally as sad, but, um, oh, and to have my daughter there, and to have her experience all these amazing women, <laughs> I know, I know, um, to have her experience and meet all these amazing women, Cause me growing when I grew up, I I was around a lot of women just by default because I was in church, but she's getting the opportunity to meet like this diverse group of women, different um, different businesses and different um, personalities and different talents and different spiritual paths and just oh I mean I'm just I was so grateful. You know, to be able to have my child in a place where I knew that no matter... she The thing she loves about Atlanta is if she holler out e or yay yay or whatever, that she going to have almost every woman in the room is going to turn their head to see what it is she needs. And she loves being surrounded by all her mamas and aunties and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I even met this, this like, twin... This twin, where it was amazing. I And I did not get her information, but I remember her name was Toya. So if anybody knows who Toya is, y'all, please. Um, I know, I don't mean worrisome. I think Periscope kicked her out one time. I hope it kicked her out again. <laughs> okay, Toya, yeah, because that was like my twin. Like, we had family stuff in common. We had all kind. It was ridiculous. She was even a cancer. So, um, shut up, Omi. Um, my cancer showing. So, but anyway, I just wanted to come and, you know, big up on me, Charles, because you did an awesome job. 
um, everybody who, you know, supported and made it as beautiful as it was. Because it was. I mean, it was a beautiful location, but the experience was just magnificent. It was awesome. Um, it was an experience, you know, and that, that to me is different. It was a full-on experience. You had the baby, Yami walking around, saging people. We call her grandma undercover, but... I mean, just everybody was in. It was awesome. You saw babies being passed around. You saw support being given. That, ooh, y'all know that sisterhood part is just, it's just real important to me. But you just saw, well, like, like even on the side, we were having side conversations. You know, healing each other and talking and saying, sis, you know, if you need help, you can ask for help. And you saw these, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um. I got blessed to meet um, Erica's grandma. Oh, my God. She was just awesome. I mean, Erica's awesome. Her kids are awesome. Grandma was awesome. <laughs> grandma was hilarious, actually. Um, but it just showed me, like, I just, I love seeing women support each other. That's really what it comes down to. I love seeing women support each other. I'm here for it. It's what I wake up for. Yep. It was awesome. So it was absolutely beautiful, you know, seeing these babies get passed around and even during the workshop, seeing women encourage each other. I mean, it was it was just beautiful. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm proud of you, Omi Shaw. You did a beautiful job. Um, I'll probably be telling you this forever, but yeah, I'm I'm so proud of you. And organization is is one of your major superpowers because you made it look so easy and I'm so sure it was not. Um, but I appreciate you and I just want you to know that it came across to us like it was seamless and easy. So, okay. Um, I think I'm done crying for the day. Not sure. I'm here to take these boobs on the road and, uh, go show these little girls at the park how to tan. Um, I am, <laughs> you know, sisterhood break me down every time though. You know, all that good stuff. I know, whatever. I don't care. I'm not embarrassed. I don't think I cried this weekend, so I ain't embarrassed. I <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take this this girl of mine to the park. Um, but I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. And I appreciate when I get on here that y'all be jumping on, supporting me, and all that kind of stuff. I be feeling all love. You will see me actually in July, the end of July, and then I'll be back in August. You know I'm coming. You already know that. Um, so, yeah, I'll be back. Before um, graduation. Definitely. Yep. I know, I know, I know. And this doesn't count. I got to get back to my Wednesdays. I will. I will, I promise. So. But y'all also send me topics. Like, send me topics. Ow! Send me topics that y'all um, want me to cover. I'm probably going to redo the um, sisterhood with the chakras. Because um, th those videos got lost. So, I might do that as a series again. I am. Um, y'all also, look at the Black Wish Convention. There is a page. I think that's the actual name of the page. Um, it will be in Merlin, no, Baltimore, where is it, where you live on me, Maryland, yeah, so that's in October, so, you know, it's a page for it, so go like the page, invite your friends, start some shit, because it made people mad already, so, yeah, I'm coming though, I'm already coming, okay, love y'all, I need to do something with this head, anyway, that's all I'll talk.